Can you smell that? That's the undeniable stench of three ring binders, pizza flavored rectangles, and those markers that get you just a little bit high if you really go to town on them. Yes, it's back to school season, and even your favorite semi-educational, semi-satirical YouTuber isn't exempt. I'm here at the YouTube Academy of Fact Learning for an exciting nine minute semester of learning facts. And oh, it looks like my professor is already here. Oh good, you actually came. Sam from Wendover? You're teaching at the YouTube Academy of Fact Learning? No, idiot, there's no such thing as the YouTube Academy of Fact Learning. We just put together this whole thing as a ploy to show you all the mistakes you made this year. People keep mixing us up, and I can't have you sullying my reputation like this. Wait, does that mean Mr. Beast isn't here? Who told you Mr. Beast was gonna be here? I don't know, but that's the only reason I'm here. I actually hate learning. Is he not here? No, he's not here. Look, just listen up. I'm gonna be teaching your first subject, science and math and planes and other stuff that has to do with numbers. Okay, here we go. Let's start with a little basic biology. In the video about the US's secret chicken stockpile, you claim that vaccines make your body produce antigens when you really meant antibodies. Really? You're starting off the year with vaccine misinformation? Well, I, no, shut up. You don't get to talk during this. Mistake number two. In your video about why 90% of Asians are lactose intolerant, you claim that people in colder climates with shorter days need the vitamin D that milk provides. Well, guess what? Milk doesn't naturally have vitamin D. The United States started adding it into milk in the 1930s to eradicate rickets. Earlier in that video, you show lactase swimming around in a stock footage stomach when in fact lactase is produced in the small intestine. Speaking of the digestive system, in your fake words video, you crack a little joke about an adder poisoning you. Plus, the snake we call an adder should actually be an anadder, but people apparently got tired of sounding like they had a stutter while trying to communicate what had just poisoned them. While that is a funny image, it is, like all of your jokes, not funny for the reason you think. To poison you, a snake would have to slip something into your drink. What snakes really do is envenomate you, since their venom goes directly into your bloodstream and isn't digested like poison. Got it? Good. Now, like a 5'7 man being questioned about his height on Tinder, let's talk about some egregiously false numbers. Hey, did you just make a joke? You never make jokes. Shut up. Remember this video? Why there are 1.5 small metal markers across the US? When I saw that, I thought, great, he's finally run out of topics, and soon he'll run out of AdSense money too, and then he'll be dead. But no, because the real topic was why there are 1.5 million small metal markers across the US, which is actually interesting, and you just titled it wrong, and you even tried to cover it up with a sneaky post-publishing title swap. And what about this? In your video about the US coin shortage, you talk about how the Mint produces 1.6 billion coins per month, but what does that say on screen? Do you think every coin is worth $1, like their Chuck E. Cheese tokens for the US economy? No, of course not. But what do you know about the mint? In your video about North Korean super dollars, you don't even use the word minting correctly. While our paper notes might seem fairly primitive, the US minting process is surprisingly costly. We print bills and mint coins, dummy. Is that it? Oh no, not even close, sorry. I was just having a sip of water before I moved on to the substantial stuff. Let's see, ah, in your video about astronauts voting from space, you say that these satellites move in a geosynchronous orbit and therefore always stay above the same terrestrial spot. That sure sounds true, but so does half as interesting as a competent fact-checking team, and we both know the truth there. In reality, geosynchronous satellites do move around the Earth, but always end up in the same spot at the same time of day. Moving on, I noticed this animation in your video about European sirens. Despite what your animators would have us to believe, that's not the amplitude of that wave. Technically, this is the amplitude of that wave. And while I'm on the topic of waves, this so-called Geiger counter is not a Geiger counter, it's a CDV715 survey meter, which uses an ion chamber, not a Geiger tube. And as for... <sighs> All right, uh, it's time for your next subject, people, places, and things, and also history. That will be taught by me. Sorry, am I late? No, just in time. Please, if you can, make him cry. Oh, that's not really my... <sighs> okay, well, he just disappeared. Anyways, hi, Sam from Half is Interesting. I'm Sam from Extremities. Extremities? What the hell is that? Some kind of new Wendover spinoff channel about how and why the world's most remote settlements exist, featuring exclusive interviews and really good art direction? Yeah, that's, that's pretty close, actually. Well, that sounds stupid. Okay, well, that hurts, but let's just go ahead and review some of these mistakes. Um, let's begin with your video on why this German woman was almost the Queen of England. Here you say James VI, but you show this portrait. Do you see what's wrong here? Look, you only have 140,000 subscribers, so I'm not gonna listen to this. Just go ahead and list my mistakes while I doom scroll Twitter over here, okay?
Okay, well, for what it's worth, this portrait is actually James the Seventh. James the Sixth looks like this. Moving on, I guess, to your video about why Switzerland has no capital, you only list three official Swiss languages, Italian, German, and French, when in fact there's a fourth, Romanche. To your credit, there aren't that many Romanche speakers in Switzerland, but the number seems a lot higher when they're all in your comments section trying to cancel you. Then there's your video about the American Black Belt, where you accidentally refer to these counties as countries, which let's face it, would be a disaster. In your video about why the US owes London 12 million pounds, you use this flag to represent London, but it actually represents the city of London, which is just a tiny part of London as a whole. And in the same video, you refer to an English pound as a piece of paper, when in fact it's a piece of plastic. Oop, it looks like my time is up. Your next subject is language and how to pronounce things good. Oh god, no. And it'll be taught by, it says here, Mr. Beast? Wait, really? Mr. Beast is here? Yep. Hey, it's me, Mr. Beast. Here's a million dollars. Ah, you're not Mr. Beast. That's right, Sherlock, it's Sam from Wendover again. Get out your big book of screw-ups and get ready to add another trilogy. Man, I hate this guy. February. What? February. Is that a real month? No. Very good. You must have learned something in the last 10 months then. Moving on, in the bananas video, you mention environmental degradation. Well, let's just hope those environmental problems aren't getting, what's the word for it? Exacerbated? Ah, yes, exacerbated. Well, I won't harp on this point. I don't want to be too exacerbatory. So let's just look at your most agonizing video of the year, how the world's most complicated language works. Ironically, you actually got all of the complicated parts of this explanation right. You just sounded like you were drunk the entire time. Delimitive became Delimitate. Monadic became Mondaic. And phoneme became Phenome. And then it became that three more times. Phenomes, phenomes, phenomes. Wait, hold on, I can explain that. You see, I was drunk the whole time. Oh yeah? Well, I'm plastered right now, and you don't see any of my pronunciations going all wobbly-wibbly, or as you would put it, wibbly-wobbly. And of course, that's not the only mistake you made in that video. You also used tired as an example of a noun. Nouns, you see, are used to describe people, places, or things. Like, the moron used tired as a noun. And for the record, tired is still not the noun in that sentence. It's moron. Tired is an adjective used to describe something. Like, for example, I am very tired of listing a year's worth of your mistakes, so I'm going to transition to our sponsor. This, this video was made possible. possible. Okay, guys, this is my channel, my ad read. Well, it's my video. Guys, I just really want to feel included, and right now I'm not feeling- Okay, fine, fine, we can share it, I'll start. If you've made it to this point, you probably love my channel, and you might even tolerate theirs. So you probably want the best HAI viewing experience possible. Well, the place for that, obviously, is Nebula. You'll find all our normal videos over there early and ad-free, plus- Now this is my bit. Plus, more importantly, you'll find big-budget Nebula originals from me, Sam from Wendover, like Alaska's Silent Summer, which we released a few months ago, or the one that we haven't really talked about yet but is coming out soon, or the other one that Sam from HAI hasn't talked about yet but is also coming out soon, or any number of others from other great creators. And what makes Nebula even- and what makes Nebula even better is the best way to get access to it, through CuriosityStream. Their bundle deal means you get access to Nebula whenever you sign up at curiositystream.com slash HAI. With that, you could watch something like Meteorite Men, which is about a duo that goes and hunts meteorites since it's actually super valuable, and that's really about all you need to know to grasp the crux of this show. So all this greatness, Nebula and CuriosityStream together, comes at an even greater price. Just $14.79 for the entire year when you sign up at curiositystream.com slash HAI or click the button on screen now. Signing up will help support me, and me, and, and me. loads of other independent creators, so check out the CuriosityStream Nebula Bundle deal today.